a little commander focused gameplay mechanic has proven to be perhaps a little too good for legacy. It's taking over the format essentially, as supposedly reporting upwards of 80% win rates and winning tournaments across the last two weekends. The format has changed massively because of initiative. We'll talk about that in today's video and what that means for the future of Magic. We'll talk a little bit about the whole idea that designing for Commander might be ruining the game. This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com. Use the link in the description or the code Kenobi to check out to get 5% off your order and to help support the show. Or you can look to support him more directly via Patreon. For $2 a month you get access to the Discord server, access to our webcam leagues and our Warhammer 40k on TTS leagues and also a free altar sleeve with free shipping every single month. This month is this one. It's meant to be for factual fiction. It's me. I'm like a, like a playing card but I'm also for seeing the future through the power of milk. Commander Legends 2 Battle of Baldur's Gate was a freaking wicked set. I've spoken about this on video before how I think the set was done very very dirty. The Commander Legends name kind of provoked people to expect something from the set that it wasn't going to deliver and D&D also again did that on the other side of things. And overall the set was perceived to not be that good when I think it's full of interesting cards, a cool limited environment and just overall a really fun set. One of its main mechanics was an evolution of the venture mechanic. Instead of going into one of three dungeons that you choose from, you instead uh, gain the initiative and venture specifically into the Undercity. The Undercity is a unique dungeon and the only one you get for seizing the initiative and it helps to fix your mana, apply pressure with counters onto creatures, pressure some more with targeted life loss. It can fix your mana with a treasure when you get wastelanded, it can draw you a card, it can scry to fix your draws, it can generate creatures to di or dig through your library for one as well. Basically, if we're real about it, the only thing the Undercity doesn't do is gain you life. It can do pretty much anything else. That makes the creatures that make the initiative kind of toolboxy and kind of fulfilling a lot of roles all in one. Unlike the venture mechanic however, it isn't done by simply triggering it over and over off of effects that trigger the venture. In the case of initiative, the initiative mechanic itself triggers itself in upkeep if you're holding it. This means a ticking time bomb. If you have the initiative it's going to tick up and up and up and you get incremental value until suddenly you've got loads of creatures in play, you're shooting your opponent for five, you're clocking them with creatures that are also just pretty good on their own. Yeah, it's strong. You can have the initiative seized from you by being hit in combat. This looks to utilize one of the original elements of the Monarch mechanic, a design that incentivized interaction and creature combat in a multiplayer environment. Monarch itself also saw play in Legacy primarily within Palace Jailer, which is a great flicker target, show and tell from hand to get rid of an Emrakul, for example. It's a removal spell in general, a one-sided howling mine, when the format isn't uh, uh, full of evasive creatures, that is. So if you take Venturing and add an element of the Monarch to it, you get a very powerful effect you get initiative so how is it being played in legacy well primarily on this three mana creature and this four mana creature the adventurer and the dungeoneer well to play those most people are playing them with soul lands and fast mana stompy or prison decks look to lock your opponent out of the game with a lock piece a chalice of the void a trinosphere or in white a suppression field to make the game plan of your opponent very difficult and then close out the game with aggressive and powerful three four and sometimes five drops originally uh, classically the Rakdos Pit Dragon, although that card has been surpassed by pretty much everything since. Like most uncommons are more powerful than the Rakdos Pit Dragon these days. White Plume Adventurer and Season Dungeoneer are just that. They are the powerful top end of the prison decks, but they also go into like Stone Forge decks too. Uh, originally they were playing played in DT in general. The cards are really good because even when killed, even when removed with Legacy's very powerful removal spells, you still have the initiative. You're still ticking along, developing advantage and pushing towards being well ahead of your opponent. They also beat face pretty well. Like the, the, the White Plum Adventure can untap itself to block and stop your opponent from taking the initiative off of you. Meanwhile, Season Dungeoneer gives itself protection from creatures in a way that is reminiscent of True Name Nemesis. This card does everything. Is this essentially the White Ragavan? It is not unusual for cards from Commander products to show up in Legacy. Historically, the original progenitors for all this and this whole conversation was Scavenging Ooze and True Name Nemesis. And in all fairness, no one ever bitched about Scoos, but many people, myself included, have bitched about True Name Nemesis at some point. How it was a blight on the format, mainly because it's just really good against the decks that I wanted to play. True Name Nemesis and its mechanical identity or its position within the game of magic is very comparable to initiative in many ways. The mechanic of initiative doesn't seem broken or wonky in multiplayer, and True Name Nemesis has protection from one person in a multiplayer game, or well, the initiative can be stolen by multiple people. And you have to do battle against multiple opponents, so the value generated by initiative just isn't that strong when you've got three other people to compete with. It's almost like some of the designs and abilities of magic aren't compatible between 1v1 and multiplayer. But the moment you move across to 1v1 with these cards, they get considerably better. This is leading to people getting angry that designed for commander cards are breaking, warping, or even changing their favourite eternal formats, and not for the better. Some people took to Twitter to complain that they were getting fast managed into initiative and they were dying before they could cast their second brains 
Storm. And those people being mad gave me life. We then saw our legacy players joke that EDH is no real format. We then saw EDH players call a legacy a dead format. And while it's a load of online drama on an imaginary town square owned by the world's richest man who is also a cunt, Elon Musk has absolutely no bearing on this topic. I just wanted to call him a cunt. Mark Rosewater recently explained that there are challenges in designing for what amounts to a new design philosophy. What he called an eternal world is the current landscape on a recent episode of Drive to Work. For a long time, the center of magic was standard. And the focus of making magic was about designing for that environment that was sort of a two-year environment. But with the popularity of Commander and other factors, uh, we are designing much more for larger formats. Um, Commander, Modern, you know, that, that uh, more people are playing with a lot more of the cards. For example, all the, the popular formats right now aren't rotating. Um, one of the things that rotation did for us was it allowed R&D to have a lot more control over the environment. That we could do things where like, oh, well, we're going to push in this direction. Now we're going to push in that direction. Eternal formats are defined by R&D mistakes to a good extent. They're defined by power level mistakes. They're defined by color pie mistakes. You know, there's a lot of things where we did something we shouldn't do. And especially if it's something we shouldn't do, meaning we don't do it again because we shouldn't do it. Um, those cards become outliers. So in a standard driven environment, those mistakes are a thing of the past. They don't exist anymore. But in an eternal world, they continue to exist. You don't get away from them. He also goes on to talk about how they have just been more careful with the lack of rotation and the focus on commander and that's the point right he says for an eternal world but it's primarily for commander they have in recent times designed for modern for modern horizons for sure but the primary focus is commander even hogak a card that broke modern in half out of modern horizons one was said by was employed to be a fun commander card they never expected it to rip modern a new one and i do think they're being more careful uh, Infinity itself was relatively low powered. We are seeing Comet see play in Legacy, but there wasn't a ton of cards breaking the format like some people were scared of. And we haven't seen standard break formats for a while either. There's a period where every standard set just had ludicrous broken rares, just absolutely ruining modern or Legacy. And we haven't had a Lurus, Underworld Breach, or Oko for a while. So I guess the question really is, is there an inherent issue with designing for Commander? It's only natural that they start to design primarily now for the main format. Standard is not the main format. It's not had the encouragement, it's not had the backing to be that. And it's always had its own problems, right? The, the rotation and the costly nature of Standard. So now they have realized that Standard is not the focus and they're moving towards focusing on Commander. I've done a whole video, by the way, on how Wizards doesn't realize that it's his own actions that have killed Standard and the enthusiasm for it. If I'm honest, if we had to pick between the two, I'd much rather the occasional Commander card break the ecosystem of Legacy or Vintage than Modern Horizons appear purposefully designed to rotate entire supposedly non-rotating formats with 30 plus absolute powerhouse super staples that you need. I think older formats being shook up by the design mistakes of Modern Magic, like Rosewater said, the eternal formats are basically designed around the design mistakes, right? They're where those design mistakes go to live or to die, depending on how you want to use that phrase. But I think those things happening is not necessarily terrible. Obviously, if they make the format miserable, then things need to be adjusted or fixed. Things need to be banned. I think the issue that I have when it comes to legacy and to a lesser extent modern these days is that the formats have been left to rot. The initiative thing was kind of being discussed amongst the community, but the community is relatively small and wizards don't throw a bone or support Legacy really in any way. These cards, for example, were not available on Magic the Gathering Online until approximately 17 days prior to me beginning to write this script. As I read this script out now, I think it's actually 19 days. Isn't that interesting? You can write something down and then you can go have a shit and then you forget about it and then it's not accurate anymore. Time time but once they arrived on modo everyone started playing them and this is where we're starting to see these win rates crop up people recording really high win rates and then them starting to play in tournaments too this happened with minsk and boo where it was like a fringe player and they got into modo and everyone tested with it and it was good and it happened with these and it's currently happening with comet the wonder dog or whatever the fuck it's called for infinity where it's currently seeing play at legacy paper events in the uk and in europe but we don't know if it's going to be a, a wholesale powerhouse in the format because it's just not on modo to allow where the real testing can be done and this brings me to my point i guess is that i would rather them experiment and try different things with an idea of not trying to break legacy gavin verhe has explicitly said that like they do consider legacy a little bit when they were designing the commander product that gave us dungeoneer and adventurer but the point is 
I want them to make mistakes and be able to fix them later down the line. That's that's something that I've said before when talking about the bannings of like Uros and Okos and such. I'd rather they didn't air cautiously. And they are quite cautious in general at the moment. We haven't seen a lot of bannings recently. But the point I'm getting at, I'm meandering towards, is that Legacy feels like it's in a rough spot because it has no support. It's like people calling it a dead format online has always been a thing that I've just sort of laughed at. But at the moment where Merc Tide is a massive representation of the format and got a, a relatively good win rate. The exact numbers we don't know because Wizards obfuscates them all. And then they don't really fix that. An issue that the majority of the community is complaining about. They just don't fix it. And then Legacy and Modern is in this conversation is not on Arena and probably never will be because it's just not even remotely within their plans. It's relegated to the MS DOS smeared in yeast that is Magic the Gathering Online. It's just a fucking shame, really, that the older formats aren't really cared for or cultivated in a way that is correct, in my opinion. They are worthy of so much more respect and admiration for showing us what magic was, is, and can be, and they just left to out to dry. I have a sneaking suspicion that if these cards actually do dominate Legacy as much as they seem to be doing, that we won't see them removed in time. I think we will have several weeks of people complaining and asking for an update on a Monday night. And then, I say Monday night, the, the ban announcement happened Monday, 5 p.m. my time. And uh, they won't come. I mean, I don't play much Legacy anymore anyway, because I find Merc Tide and the decks that play it just fucking unfun and not interesting. And I'll probably, we'll probably see a similar thing now, where people get bored of initiative and it's never fixed. It's okay that the mistake showed up, but if it is dominating the format, if it's warping the format, do something to fix it. The last bit I did want to cover is the chorus of fix the enabler, not the card. People have been saying that the Songlands and the fast man like Chrome Mox and Lotus Petals are to blame. That they allow people to play these powerful effects that need to be taken out of the format for the format to survive and still be fun. But that said, these things have never broken the format previously. Or they rarely do, should I say. Like, Show and Towers played these cards and it didn't break the format. But half when Omniscience and... Uh, no, not Omniscience, sorry. Dig Through Time was a thing. And Mono Red Prison, if anything, has been a policeman for the format. Or a police person for the format. Uh, going out of its way to stop the powerful Cantrip Suites and the Delver decks from completely dominating because Chalice on the Void off of Soul Land is kind of a check. A check and a balance to keep the format mildly balanced when things have got obnoxious. They are both a part of the format's identity and they form like an archetype that helps to keep the blue pile shit in check. I think that someone has to be able to play with their soul lands and fast mana somewhere. And whilst Vintage is full of like, you know, monoliths and soul rings, Legacy isn't that format, right? The soul land is kind of Legacy's thing, if anything, compared to the workshops of Vintage. But ultimately, I'm talking about things now that are affecting a small portion of people within Magic, a small portion of my viewer base. As I get larger and larger as a creator, more unique viewers, more subscribers, more viewers in general, I do feel this weird tension where I'm like, I do want to talk about the older formats. So I do want to know if people want to hear about that stuff. But I also feel like Wizards doesn't give a shit, or much of a shit. It's frustrating. It's part of the burnout that I need to do a video on at some point. That you want to do it on these things, but if Wizards don't give a shit about them, don't give them any hope, well, how the fuck can we support them? when the game is veering towards not supporting those things. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Were you surprised to see Commander Staples wreck Legacy? Is that kind of fun? I think it's kind of fun, as, as long as it gets adjusted in due time if it is ruining the format. And let me know if you want to see more stuff about Legacy and Modern on the channel. And let me know if you want to see gameplay on the channel. I put some Pioneer and Historic up recently, and it performed quite badly. Would you prefer to see Legacy and Modern, for example? I'm thinking of putting a modern video up playing with this deck alongside this. Uh, so that might be up when this video comes out. Take a look at the channel. There'll be a link in the description below if it's there too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Ta-ta for now.